Hey everybody. So there's a talk, <laughs> let's just say that talk of Joe Biden with the swing of a pen. It's not the swing of a pen. It's the stroke of a pen for giving $10,000 of student debt for everybody who's carrying student debt. Um, maybe I've got the details a little off, whatever. Here are my thoughts and some thoughts which I didn't concoct, which, you know, I've collected and uh, weighed and decided, yeah, I kind of like these. So first, just a story. In 2000 and, oh, I don't know, 13, 14, somewhere in there, I went to a, uh, what was supposed to be a peak oil themed gathering at a community, like a rural intentional community slash campground in kind of near Pittsburgh. So in southeast, um, southwest Pennsylvania. And one of the things that really animated the discussions that were taking place, you know, not with the, the invited speakers addressing the crowd, but when the crowd broke up and, you know, was just talking amongst themselves. And I, I actually did a, it's like an alternate session to one of the evening presentation sessions where we just had a, you know, a group discussion. And one thing that really upset people was that a lot of college graduates that they knew, you know, this wasn't stuff they'd read on Twitter. This was people they knew, young people they knew had done what they were supposed to do, done what they were told was the path to middle-class stability and respectability. They took out loans, they went to college, they got degrees, and then they got jobs that didn't require degrees and they weren't able to pay back their loans and they were facing, you know, bad credit and bill collectors and basically just the shame and, uh, and, you know, lack of, of societal consideration that comes from being, you know, a loser, broke, deadbeat, in debt, you know, that really upset people. And it really upset the organizer of the conference that that's what people were animated about. He, he wanted them to be mad about, you know, peak oil and climate change. And uh, yeah, everybody there was like, yeah, yeah, peak oil, climate change. But the student debt thing really, really got their blood boiling. And I agree. Now, here's another story. <laughs> I got what many would consider to be a useless degree. My, my bachelor's degree was in general studies and uh, emphasis in fine art, East Asian studies, and philosophy. Uh, with that degree, well, then I went to grad school for philosophy, where I, I stopped short. I have a one incomplete, and I failed to defend my thesis. So uh, other than that, I, I did the work for a master's degree, but I didn't really rack up much debt in grad school because I had a a tuition waiver because I was teaching undergrads. I even got a stipend. I even got paid. I got paid to go to grad school. That's kind of cool. But uh, I still owed like 30 grand, you know, for my undergrad. But then I went to work at Amazon, was there two years, uh, left, cashed out my stock options, and I wrote one check to pay off all my student loans. If, if I hadn't, you know, gotten that stock option windfall at Amazon, though, here I am 54 years old, I might still be paying on my student loans. <laughs> you know, given my work history and the sorts of money I made outside of Amazon, you know, other than that two years at Amazon, the sorts of money I've made in my life have been pretty, pretty meager. And I might well still be paying on my student debt. So I'm definitely, I, I feel for the people. I have compassion and empathy for people who are struggling with student debt. That said, most people don't go to college. If our society is, is organized such that the only people who can have a respectable, comfortable, dignified life are the ones who went to college, then that society is broken. That does not need to be defended. That does not need to be propped up or you know, extended into the future. That needs, if it's gonna fail, it needs to be allowed to fail quickly. And then we reorganize as a society. What we have now is a racket where the federal government guarantees loans you know, that banks make to students, I was going to say corporations, uh, I suppose they're corporations, but universities constantly, you know, having, they have lavish grounds, lavish living arrangements, uh, ballooning staffs of non-educators, you know, these are administrators who are breathing down the neck of the actual educators, and they're beginning to outnumber the educators. 
well, how do you pay, you know, upper middle class salaries to all of these administrators who, you know, what do they do? <laughs> Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, how do you pay for it? Well, you jack up tuition. And where do the people coming to your, your university get the money to pay that tuition? Well, the government guarantees banks that they will be made whole if the students default on their debts. So the, I almost said it again, corporations, the colleges and universities can continually jack up their costs. Uh, students continually get into more and more debt for useless degrees. And, you know, the, the system rolls on. And then the worst part about it, and Joe Biden as a senator was key to making this happen, uh, bankruptcy laws were adjusted about a decade and a half ago to make sure that student loan debt could not be discharged through bankruptcy, which is to say, you, it doesn't matter how low you fall, you know, or the, the mechanism that we have for starting over doesn't apply to student debt. So now we have $1.5 trillion in outstanding student debt. That is not going to be paid back, period. Full repayment of that debt is not a possibility. It's not even on the table, it, you know, except we could just create so much money that, you know, a cup of coffee costs a billion dollars. And yeah, then 1.5 trillion in student debt could be discharged, you know, if you mow lawns and, and, and you know, skimp on coffee. Uh, but otherwise, it's not going to be paid back. One, student debt just has to be, you have to be able to discharge that in bankruptcy. You know, if your life, if your financial life is in total collapse, total catastrophe, that student debt, you know, that goes along, that goes away with all the other debts. It's not going to be repaid. Two, the government just has to stop guaranteeing to make lenders whole if it's for education. If you go to a bank and you say, I want to attend this university, it's going to cost $100,000 to get the degree I want. The bank should look at you and say, well, show us your high school transcripts. What degree are you pursuing? Oh, you want a degree in you know, some liberal art? Well, you're not gonna be able to repay. First, we can see that you goofed off in high school and you're probably gonna goof off in college and, and really not learn much. You're clearly not able to you know, graduate and get a STEM degree in four years. Um, you know, we as a lender, we don't see much possibility that you're actually going to turn this degree that you're proposing to get with our money into an, in, you know, an income producing job that will allow you to repay the debt. We don't see it happening. So uh, either no or sure, we'll lend you the money at 200% interest. You know, that's the risk premium. Because if you're going to go and get a liberal arts degree, which is what I have, okay, I'm not some STEM guy who's, who's thumbing it. Here's another story. When I was a grad student at the University of Missouri in Columbia, right across from the building called the General Classroom Building, there was a law school, and a bunch of engineering students around graduation time, they made a big banner, which they hung from steel cables, which couldn't be cut, from the law school facing over to the General Classroom Building, which is where people take, you know, liberal arts classes, uh, a big banner that said, would you like fries with that? So these are the STEM guys, high on their own, you know, self-regard, mocking future paupers and service industry liberal arts graduates. I thought that was disgusting. I still think that's disgusting. So I, I'm, not, I'm not the sort of person to hang that banner. But for real, if somebody told you, because of their lived experience, it seems true, if you go to college and get a degree in anything at all, you're going to be qualified for a middle-class job. That was true in my father's day. My father thought he was the cat's meow because, you know, he was a Secret Service agent and he, he knew a lot of important people. But, you know, he flunked out of college. Flunked out of the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville, which is where I was born, and went and worked... You know, he joined the Air Force and he worked as a military policeman for a few years before he went back and got his bachelor's degree. And then he got a job with the Secret Service. Somebody with his work ethic and his lack of academic rigor would never get a job in the Secret Service today. Never. Could not happen. But, you know, he, he wasn't really interested in hearing about changing circumstances. Um, so, yeah, he was a devoted Rush Limbaugh listener and, you know, 
very much sold on his own virtue as evidenced by the fact that he was doing so well in life. The effort that the boomers put in to get where they are will not get you their lifestyle anymore. But this whole college racket is just making things worse. One, normal people need to be able to make a decent living and buy a home and support their families without a college education. That is absolutely number one. That is the top priority. Number two, this college racket with the government backstopping all loans you know, made for the purposes of education, which allows them to continuously crank up their, their tuition, that's got to go. That's got to go. And three, I think that, I mean, this can't happen because graduates from elite, very expensive elite schools run these, these big corporations. But really, I would think the big corporations just need to say, if you're applying for a non, non-STEM job and you're coming from Harvard or Princeton or, you know, Middlebury, um, we're not hiring. We're not hiring you. If you, if you had the money to get that sort of degree, go and live off of your connections. We're going to hire some normal people here, <laughs> you know? Uh, that, that, I realize, is not a possibility, just given, you know, who's making the hiring decisions and what their background is. And finally, if you're applying for a loan from the bank, the bank just needs to treat it like any other loan. They need to do their due diligence and determine, you know, with reliable metrics, how likely it is that that loan will be repaid, given the course of action that the loan applicant is proposing, namely going to an expensive school to get a bullshit degree, which will leave them with no, no skills. <laughs> and again, general studies, fine art, East Asian studies, philosophy major right here. Okay, so I'm on the side of the people who want to learn, who want to increase their knowledge, their sophistication, their ability to articulate complex thoughts in simple or at least, you know, understandable language. I'm on your side. <laughs> I, I, I want you to succeed at that. But I don't want everybody else who doesn't have the accreditation that you got by going to school for four or five years to have to suffer. You know, this, this idea that we accept that, you know, to have a dignified life, you have to go to college, I mean, that acceptance, that, that base level acceptance of that premise, is that is the cornerstone of our misery in this context, in my opinion, right now, late on a Sunday afternoon, after half a beer. All right, what do you think?